If you follow quantum computing, you've probably heard something about quantum error correction and how important it's expected to be for building large-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computers. But what is quantum error correction anyway? And why is it so important? Let's start at a very basic level. Quantum computers perform operations on quantum information, which is different from classical information. The problem is that quantum information is extremely fragile. So fragile, in fact, that you can ruin it just by proverbially looking at it. And of course, what we really mean is by measuring it. And it need not be a person measuring. Any interaction between qubits and the world around them has the potential to ruin quantum information they store. That's why quantum computers look the way they do. The outer shells of the refrigerator help keep the qubits isolated at almost absolute zero temperature so no thermal energy can disturb them. There's also magnetic shielding to keep them protected from magnetic fields. Quantum computers have come a long way in the past few years, and it's exciting to see the progress happening. But we need a few more pieces to the puzzle before they'll be able to run the quantum computations of our dreams, like using Shor's algorithm to factor integers with hundreds of digits. Not only will that require more qubits than we currently have, we'll also need those qubits to be more robust against noise and errors. This is where quantum error correction comes into play. The idea is to use what are called quantum error correcting codes to protect quantum information. Classical error correcting codes were first developed in the 1940s as a way of making computers more reliable. At the most basic level, these add some redundant information to a string of bits often in the form of so-called parity check bits. As an example, consider that you might want to store an 8-bit number like this, which is 157 in binary. Now you add an extra bit on the end, a bit on which you store a 0 if the number of 1s in your encoded number is even, and a 1 if the number of 1s is odd. That way, an uncorrupted encoded string will always have an even number of ones, including the parity bit. So if we see an odd number of ones, we know that an error has occurred. So for 157, there are five ones without that final parity bit. Five is odd, so we enter a one in the final bit. And as advertised, the total number of ones is now even, six. Now, if an error causes any of the eight bits in the number to change, that will change the number of ones either increasing it by one or decreasing it by one. So if we come back to use that number later and find this number, for example, which has only four ones in the number itself, but a parity of one, then we know an error has occurred. With just a single parity bit, we can't recover the correct number. This only tells us that an error occurred. But if we saved two copies of the number and they disagree due to an error, this process could tell us which one might be correct. There are also parity checking schemes that are much more complex than this, which allow for data correction. Generally, adding parity checks makes the string of bits longer, but the information is now stored more reliably. And if a relatively small number of the bits get changed or corrupted in some way, the original bits, representing the information we actually care about, can be recovered. In other words, by using more bits, we can correct errors that occur. Quantum error correcting codes use the same basic principles to protect qubits against being corrupted through noise and errors. It's not quite as simple as adding a parity check when it's quantum information, but it's the same idea. We start with a small number of qubits, maybe even just one qubit, which we then encode to a larger number of qubits. In the context of error correction, each of the many qubits involved are called physical qubits, whereas the overall collection of qubits into one information-preserving structure is called a logical qubit. Early attempts at quantum error correcting codes include one created by Peter Shor in 1995, now commonly called the 9-qubit Shor code. Exactly how that code works is complicated, but at a high level, Shor's 9-qubit code first uses three qubit repetition codes similar to a classical one, to protect against bit flips. Then it combines three copies of this repetition code in a way that also protects against phase flips. This was the first scheme to correct both bit flips and phase flips. 
If you're not familiar with some of those terms, don't worry. There's a course that covers this extensively in IBM Quantum Learning, linked in the description below. Unfortunately, the 9-qubit shortcode won't work very well for us. It isn't suitable for the noise levels of modern qubits, it can't correct all types or patterns of errors that can occur, and there are also issues with the connectivity of the qubits. But there have been many other classes of quantum error correcting code put forth in the last three decades. In loose analog of classical parity checks, a lot of effort has focused on quantum low density parity check codes, or QLDPC codes. A subset of quantum LDPC codes called surface codes were collectively the leading candidates for quantum error correction for many years. Recently, researchers at IBM introduced a powerful new quantum error correcting code called a bivariate bicycle code. This is also a kind of quantum LDPC code, but one designed to protect quantum information much more efficiently than older approaches. A big thing that makes this family of codes attractive is scalability. LDPC codes, in general, use parity checks that each involve only a small number of qubits, but they distribute those checks across the whole system. What sets BB codes apart is that by leveraging more connections between the qubits than in surface codes, they can keep the error correction strong with far fewer physical qubits per logical qubit. But keep that requirement in mind, this does involve higher connectivity between qubits. A diagram of a BB code, called a Tanner graph, shows how physical qubits are interconnected and which sets of checks are performed. These checks allow the logical qubits to remain intact when some of the physical qubits suffer noise, provided that the error rate stays below a certain threshold. Note that this is being done on a square lattice. The BB code can be applied to different numbers of qubits. One promising instance uses 144 qubits to encode 12 logical qubits. This is often referred to as the gross code in reference to the old unit of measurement, a dozen dozen, or a gross. One needs additional qubits to perform logical checks, or syndrome measurements. These additional qubits are shown as x-check and z-check qubits in the Tanner graph. With these 288 physical qubits, the code can, in principle, protect 12 logical qubits for on the order of a million syndrome cycles. To achieve the same with a surface code would take almost 3,000 qubits, an order of magnitude more than the gross code. This radical code advancement is one of several reasons for the prominent position of the Nighthawk processor in the IBM Quantum Roadmap. The Nighthawk chip features 120 qubits arranged in a square lattice, as opposed to the heavy hexagonal or heavy hex layout seen in previous generations like Heron. This is critical for implementing the bicycle bivariate quantum code, opening up exploration of robust fault-tolerant quantum computations. This higher connectivity of qubits also enhances the processor's ability to execute denser and more complex quantum circuits. In particular, it reduces the number of swap gates, intermediate operations required for moving information from qubit to qubit, thereby naturally decreasing the circuit depth for many applications. The square lattice is also a more natural fit for computational problems emulating phenomena in nature that themselves occur on square grids, such as certain material simulations and statistical physical models. Nighthawk continues IBM's trajectory of reducing error rates and improving quantum hardware quality with each new processor generation, following on successes of Eagle and Heron. This reduction of error rates in physical qubits, the reduction of circuit depths for many applications, and the facilitation of BB error correcting codes make Nighthawk a key landmark on the road not just to quantum advantage, but to a large scale, fault tolerant quantum computer. Thanks for joining and I'll see you in the next video.